The true story of Pocahontas is a tragic tale of a young native girl who was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and allegedly murdered by those who were supposed to keep her safe. And in this video we will recreate how she might have looked in real life, as well as go through her less washed out version of her story based off of the Matapanai oral tradition and also see how some of her descendants might have looked like. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Pocahontas, whose birth name was Matoaka, was born around 1596 as the daughter to Wahun Senaka, the chief to the Powhatan Confederacy, an area located in parts of present-day Virginia, Maryland, and North Carolina. He was like the high chief in charge of all the smaller tribes that made up this confederacy. Her mother unfortunately died from childbirth, but Pocahontas was surrounded by lots of love from her father's many other wives and children. Then, 27-year-old John Smith came in 1607, and stirred things up. Pocahontas was around 10 or 11 at the time. Captain John Smith was like a rogue. His history is very adventurous, involving piracy and warfare, so with his personality when things got tough, he went into nearby tribes and aggressively demanded supplies, kind of like robbing a store at gunpoint. And one of those tribes Pocahontas was living at, so the Powhatan captured him. Eventually, he got on the good side of Pocahontas' father, and as both the English and the natives feared of the Spanish, they aligned themselves, and John Smith was made leader of the colonists by the Powhatans. From him, we have a lot of stories written in his 1624 book, how Pocahontas saved John Smith during his honorary ceremony, Another is that Pocahontas brought food to his starving colonies, and a third is that she sneaked into Jamestown to warn John of an assassination attempt. The Matapanai tribe says she couldn't have saved John from an honorary ceremony since she was a kid and not allowed to attend, and they wouldn't kill the recipient of a great honor. Second, if Pocahontas were to bring food to Smith's colony, she would have been a child and not in charge of the group and it's likely she was instead asked to join the group visiting the settlers. Her pre-planned presence as a child represented no ill intentions and supported a gesture of peace. Third, she couldn't have sneaked into Jamestown to warn Smith because A, she was a kid, B, it was the dead of winter and 12 miles away, and C, a letter in 1608 accounts for no such tale. It was only after John's 1624 book that he wrote of this. At this point, anyone who could refute the claim was likely dead. The 1600s was a horrible, horrible time for any native tribe near the settlers. Women in the heat of summer would usually be topless, and children wore little or no clothing. Nothing out of the ordinary for them, however, for the settlers, it certainly was. They soon found themselves being sexually targeted by the English colonists. Children and women were all targeted, and you might even see instances where mothers would offer themselves to spare their kids. In the midst of all of this, Pocahontas had her coming-of-age ceremony and now chose Pocahontas as her new name after her mother. At 14, she then married Kokuum, a brother of another chief, and soon got pregnant. By age 17, there's lots of tension between the settlers and the Powhatan communities. Lots of ambushes from both sides. The English hoped a kidnapping of the chieftain's daughter might thwart the natives' attacks. Her husband had no choice, either give up Pocahontas or suffer violence against his village. With a loose promise that she will be safe and return soon, unwillingly, he gave her up. She had to leave her newborn with the women of the tribe before she left. The colonists then killed her husband. In captivity, she was sexually assaulted multiple times. We know this from her confiding in her sister and brother-in-law when they were invited to save her from her depressed state. She had a son by this experience, Thomas. The colonists brainwashed her into thinking her father did not love her. 
They converted her to Christianity and gave her a new Christian name, Rebecca. She then married John Rolfe. John was a settler and businessman. Spain, you see, had the best tobacco and he wanted better tobacco in which the natives had. In order to get their secret recipe, he married Pocahontas. This had a negative effect on the natives because now tribal lands were highly sought after and the tribes suffered great losses from greedy tobacco farmers. Now on the king and queen's good side, John went to England with Pocahontas and her son, her kidnapper, Captain Argyll, and some tribal members, including her sister and a spiritual leader. Though many settlers were committing atrocities against the Powhatan, many elites in England did not approve of the mistreatment of the natives. The bringing of Pocahontas to England to show friendship with native nations was a key to continued financial support for the colonists. Despite visiting the king and queen and getting to partake in England's luxuries, Pocahontas knew she was being used and wanted to return home. She met John Smith again, but with disdain, and about ten months later in the spring of 1617, John Rolfe and Pocahontas sailed off. Shortly into their trip, she vomited and died after dinner. Her sister said she was in good health while in England and on the ship. Her sudden death suggests poisoning. She was 21 and buried in England. Her father soon died less than a year later from grief and guilt for not rescuing his daughter. So what happened to her son and husband? Well, John had to go back to Virginia for business, but Thomas was sick. So he left Thomas in the care of a friend, Sir Louis Stuckley, who then transferred him to his uncle, Henry Rolfe. Thomas was set to sail back to Virginia, but didn't do so until adulthood. He never saw his father again, and in 1622, John Rolfe died roughly around 36 years old. Thomas wouldn't go back to Virginia until about 20 in 1635, at which point he inherited incredible amounts of land from his father and mother's families. He also married the daughter of a prosperous landowner in Virginia, Jane, and they had one daughter, also named Jane. Their daughter Jane married Robert Bowling, who himself came from a gentry landowning family in England. Jane is said to have died shortly after giving birth to her only son, John Bowling. John made the Bowling Plantation his home, opened a successful tobacco warehouse, and was even a member of the Virginia government. He married Mary Kennan, and together they had six children. Of these six children, if you are directly related to Pocahontas, it would be through one of these great-great-grandchildren. An interesting fact is that through John Bowling II, we have his child John III, who married Mary Jefferson, the sister to Thomas Jefferson. Their great-great-granddaughter would be Edith Wilson, the first lady and wife of President Woodrow Wilson, nearly exactly 100 years ago. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I will see you in the next one.